YouTube, Jeremy from Oz here. So this one is just a quick video of our backyard urban permaculture garden. So this is a little courtyard of the workshop and here I'm just nursing some carobs and a couple of other plants whose name eluded me at the minute. I've got a jasmine and the jasmine is likely to grow up this trellis that we have on this wall. As you can see, there's quite a lot of sun overhead. So we have a grape that we're growing over this trellis. And so as that grape grows in, we'll get shade in summer and grapes, and then drop its leaves and allow warmth into the workshop in winter. So we've also got our chookies. And obviously chookies are a really good permaculture element in that they take all of our food scraps and turn them into eggs. A few more carobs over here. Again, we've got the carobs and a grape that will be growing up this wall here to supplement the other grape and uh, increase the yields. Nice little seating spot where we can come and talk to the chookies. So this is the chook run. It's quite a bright area. And here we have a lily pilly hedge that we're growing in. Chooks have had a bit of a go at the bottom end of it, but the goal there is for this whole wall to end up being hedged. And you can sort of see, well, let's get that way. You can see that the height of those lily pillies is plenty enough to provide privacy to the neighbors. And our little chookies down there. All right, at the end of the yard, we have our chookie gate we put in through the renovation. And that allows us to come through into the garden. See from this side, struggling a little bit is the lemongrass. Uh, good for culinary. It also helps to deter mosquitoes and uh, the dogs eat it as a form of uh, I guess you'd call it medicine. Basically, it allows them to uh, rough up their guts. Visibility down to the chooks with a nice open air arrangement. But also a bit of screen and privacy. Down beside our little mate here, we've got some marjoram, which again is another herb that would go into the herb spiral, as we saw earlier, when you move around. Got some plantings coming in to finishing up the landscaping. Beside the bamboo, we've got a thornless blackberry, which will provide shade during summer. And then the worm farm that's sitting in behind gets a bit of airflow through winter when it dies back to canes. The ground cover that we've planted in here is called lipia, and that should form a nice mat and hopefully protect from the, the puppy dogs. We've got thyme here that's going to go through the bricks get a bit of protection from the puppy dogs. A little bit more uh, grassy stuff. We finished out the um, deck seat. So that's a nice little feature just out here that we can sit on and have a morning coffee and talk to the dogs. Hello Wade. How you doing mate? Doing all right? And this landscaping is still fairly fresh. It will grow in planted some grass in a very small area just to give the boys somewhere a bit softer to play. On this side of the garden we have a bay tree and bay trees can go pretty tall. Secret of course to anything is to just keep it pruned but that's an excellent herb whenever you're making a silver side or lots of other cooking stews etc soups throw in a couple of bay leaves and of course the swamp for the puppies and the two playthings over here so they can sit there and jump up and down getting wet and having all their fun when we first planted this garden we used pallet timber as a garden edge and it looked really good uh, we had a suspicion that it might end up losing it uh, losing itself to the termites and indeed it did um, so we pulled all that out and uh, replaced it with these granite offcuts that we got as a recycling option. We have 
a Nashi pear, actually a graft with two Nashis on it, just down here. We've got all sorts of parsleys and squash and mint, some blueberries in the back there. Just filling in a bit of space. I think there's even a guava in here somewhere. In behind it, we have a tamarillo. Some more squash just down here. In front of us is the pomegranate. I'll just pan back to that. Pomegranate also loses its leaves in winter. So what you see now is providing massive shade protection to the house from the morning sun in summer, as is this peach here. But in winter, that all drops its leaves and uh, we get the morning sun. So that's a permaculture element providing food and also then temperature control during summer and winter. And I'll bring you into the current crop that's on that, but it's looking pretty healthy. One of the other things that you see in permaculture is multiple uses for things. So on this peach that we've got here, we've actually grown a custard apple. And previous attempts with the custard apple have been pretty scrappy, but this one here you can see is actually growing up through the peach. Sorry, this is a Cameron apple. So the, the peach is providing a trestle support as well as a bit of protection and shade. And uh, that's actually doing really well. It's the first place we've found that it really does well there. Off in behind at the reticulation, we've got a cherry guava. And they taste really nice. I've only had a couple off this, but this year we've got a whole pile of fruit coming in, which is uh, really exciting. This spring and summer, everything has just gone gangbusters. Here's a peach on the peach tree. Now, last year the peach got an absolute proliferation of buds and then fruit, but there was too much fruit and I think the fruit was all a bit overstressed and it just all dropped off. This year the pomegranate is doing really well. We've got quite a bit of flowers, but uh, quite a large number of fruit already setting as we look through the tree. We come around the base of the peach. We've got basils and we've got tomatoes, more steak events. All this area here is the overflow from the water from upstairs in the uh, hot water, solar hot water. So it just gets a little bit of extra moisture as opposed to going down the drain. This is our recent back step. Hello Tucker, how you doing mate? You're a good boy. You're a good boy. Good boy. So we've just rendered this step. We've got a little bit of finishing off to do as is all renovations. And um, down the bottom of the pomegranate, we have an asparagus fern. This is the first year here. So it's probably be two or three years before we get any decent crop off it. Very important not to cut the spears off in the first few years to give it a chance to build up energy in the ground. Coming around, got some more ground cover in the squash. And this plum, as you can see, is absolutely littered with fruit. So this is an early plum, and this tree is just covered, absolutely covered in fruit. Here we have a few more pomegranates coming on. Actually quite a few. This is going to be a bumper year for pomegranates as well, I reckon. So these two plums cross-pollinate. And a little green plant in the back, I forget what that one's called. Ah yes, tamarind, thanks Minx. And we've got some parsley. The flowers on this, we've had a lot of bee activity around the flowers, so it's providing some attraction for pollinators, which is really awesome. Um, further down, we have our assistant gardener Wade showing the way. What have we got next mate, is that a fig? This looks like a fig. I believe we've got a guava in the background there. And behind, I believe we have the remnants of an apple that uh, Wade started chewing on. So we've actually got three apples. There's this one, this one here, and this one here. These are all cross-pollinators. Unfortunately, Wade managed to uh, do some gardening and chomp it off. I'm attempting to do a graft back together, so I've wrapped it with string and then taped it and we'll see, might survive. Bit of a shame that one. A mango tree, 
I've got a few mangoes showing up on it. Um, gets quite a bit of weight on the branches, so they do tend to droop a bit when the fruit's on there. Down below the mango, we have fever few. That made into a tea is good for migraines and uh, other health benefits. In behind another little blackberry, hiding away. Up the back is a strawberry guava, which is also massing in fruit. So really looking forward to this year's crop on that one. The Fuyu, persimmon. We um, get a few showings of foliage on this one. And then the last two years we've got a single fruit off it. So it might just be struggling a little bit where it is. This one here is chamomile, I believe, not chamomile. Um, Mozzie repellent. Ah, rose geranium. Maybe not then. I am um, not that great with names. This one's a dahlia, I believe. <laughs> rose chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum, okay. Um, the figs are going off this year. We've got a whole pile of figs there. That one's a white fig. Down below the white fig, we have yarrow. I believe that's good for toothaches, although I could be wrong in that. In the back we have an orange that's going. Um, we've got a baronia that's sort of providing a bit of cover and shade as this whole lot established. Down the back we've just got a rose. We've got our catholine. And this is a dwarf vertical peach. So this is the second year. We did actually have two of those alongside each other as identical plants but then one of the boys decided to chew it up as well so fun fun bananas with a couple of pups coming up down below one two so we'll probably hide those off and move them on i think this one might be a chili and this was an asparagus fern that's had its dash it's now dropped down a few more plants this is another pair of apples grafted onto a single root and again we're starting to see some fruit on the apple which is really exciting. Um, peanut tree and I think there's another guava down here and our coffee. Now coffee doesn't really like a lot of wind and recently we've had this door beside it open so I'm considering that that might have been a drying effect. We do see some regrowth starting to show on the trunk. There's a couple of green spots. This has been pretty good in the past, but it's just struggling a bit at the moment. So that one we'll see how we go. Over to the other side, we've got some more native guavas, some elderflowers, tomatoes strewn in amongst. I think that might be hibiscus. Not sure, a bit more squash. This is a black apple, I believe. Another tamarind. Tamarillo, sorry. Um, I forget the name of this one. Fluffy leaves down the bottom. Some more spinach, we've got strawberries in. Some beetroot. There's the elderflower starting to come onto flower. Some more spinach. And stack more tomatoes up in the back there. And this is the obligatory herb spiral. So the goal with the herb spiral is to provide a multiple environment in a single location. The change in elevation gives the top level a drier climate. The stuff at the front gets more light, the stuff at the back gets less light. So you can find a combination of light and dry and wet feet on the spiral. So typically up the top you've got oregano, a bit of sage. As you come around, um, we don't have any at the moment, but there's uh, marigolds sometimes. Uh, we've got some more tomatoes at the front. We usually find uh, chives, parsley, basil, and uh, that's what we're sort of seeing through here. But um, yeah, we've only just replanted all this following all of the renovations. Ah, uh, yes, so what you can see is the snow peas in the back and the tomatoes planted together for a bit of sisterhood. Um, another good combination there is corn and snow peas or peas or beans and your 
uh, squash. So there's some pretty awesome combinations going on there. But that is a quick tour of the backyard. This used to be just totally paved, no uh, plantings, just a really hot, dry, really unpleasant place to be. But at the moment, we're in summer, first month of summer, and not only are we getting a stack of food, we've also got the added, added benefit of a really enjoyable environment. Nice and cool. Hey boys, you're on camera. Behave please. Nice. Yes ma'am. Yeah. We will uh, provide an update in uh, six months or so once we're ready to pick some of those plums. One of the joys of a backyard garden is that whenever you have a surplus, you can just throw it up and dry it. And that helps to supplement the rest of your kitchen herbs and spices. And they really are what makes a meal magnificent. So even if you just start yourself a small herb garden, you'll find that you have coriander. I know some of you will say, yeah, don't like coriander, but things like dill, the rosemary, the bay leaves, the basil, all of the yummy stuff that's just adding that little extra bit of zing. Just, it's just worth doing. Just find a spot, put it in a pot. Gardening makes life better. One of the awesome things about permaculture is that you never stop learning. Everything that we've done here, we've just started from not being able to grow a single plant. Just finding out, planting something, see what grew, see where it grew. If it didn't work, not getting disheartened, trying somewhere else. And at the end of the day, it's just such a lovely place to come and sit now that we've spent that time. It's just... This could still be those 20 by 20 sell your house project home pavers. And all it's taken is a bit of time and effort whole pile of recycled materials. Sure, we've bought a few plants here and there, but if you're clever about it, you can collect seeds and cuttings and grow from, from that. In your groceries, you've got seeds that come in your pumpkins, your tomatoes. Even things like basil will grow from a cutting. Just put it in some water and let it grow roots and then off you go. Strike off five or six plants. And you've got a garden of, of herbs. Fruit trees can be expensive but you can get one and learn how to graft. Graft three or four onto a single plant. Just take cuttings of the next fruit tree you see as you're over at your mate's house or something. Citrus and apples and plums and pears and peaches. These are things that can get quite expensive to buy, but are really good for you. We tried to focus on getting our fruit trees in early, figuring that if we could get that growing, then we would be able to save a bit on our grocery bill and also have some varied diet. Stuff like lettuces are cheap. and We struggled with lettuces and bugs. Uh, the spinach over there, you can see it's had a bit of an attack. We've got the chooks so that we can let them run through and just have a bit of pest control. We've got birds that come through and it's all just part of the fun. Wade's having a bit of a swamp doggy moment over there. Good boy, Wade, hey? Where's your chook? Where's your chook? Where's your chook? Good boy. Something to control the heat in summer. Just uh, really life affirming in spring to see everything just come flying up. The fruit, the flowers, the bees, the life just wakes you up and says, this is what it's about. At the end of the day, we just plant food. Stop my rant before I start sounding too hippy trippy. <laughs> Got my day job to go to. Thanks, guys.